This video is brought to you by my generous backers over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel and get cool perks like access to the Discord, seeing the videos a week before anyone else, or exclusive Patreon-only gameplays, plus a myriad of other perks, then check out my Patreon. The link's in the description below. Grizzlebrand versus Nissa Vaswoodseer, been seen her a lot recently. Uh, bubbling muck with... A bunch of swamps, I mean, what's that, eight mana? Although we'd use one. No, we could use one from the Arcane Signet and then use eight mana. Yeah, very, very slow, but we can go for that on turn. Yeah, we can do it on turn four, it's not too bad. So we need to get as many swamps into play as possible if that's our game plan. And already getting off to a fast start. This may be Elf Tribal, but it's too early to tell just yet. Get down the Arcane Signet, our first piece of ramp. And it is Emerald Medallion, so they can make use of Arbor Elf to get a green mana and go for a two mana green spell, but instead deciding to swing in with the Arbor Elf, we get into another swamp. Uh, so it's, yeah, luckily not gone too fast, although our opponent's off to a pretty good start. We just have to hope that we keep this Arcane Signet in hand, although it would only set us back a turn anyway, because we have gotten into another Swamp now. Now generating mana with the Arbor Elf, so they could go for something as big as a 5 mana creature here, but instead going for Nyssa, that only costs them 2 mana. Then a 2 mana Cultivate as well, Emerald Medallion, one of the best ramp cycles that you can use in a mono deck. In fact, it's probably the best now it is an Obnixilis. I think we're best just sticking to the plan of bubbling muck into our commander. And we'll see if our opponent can deal with that. They may have Lignifies and Song of the Dryads, Beast Withins. And there's Ugin, Khan. There's plenty of means of green dealing with creatures and, well, any permanent type really. Plenty of spot removal they could run. And there we go, there's the Beast Within, so in response we will draw 7. Uh, that's a bunch more ramp, a him to Torak, we can go for Obnixilis. All his dust would get rid of some stuff as well. Yeah, and we've got a good blocker with the Beast, so I think we can just take our time getting our Grizzlebrand out again. Now untapping, and I don't mind if our opponent plays out a bunch more stuff here, because... We do have that all is dust in hand. Okay, an acidic slime. Does that go on a land or our signet? It goes on the signet. I think I would have gone for a land personally because we have shown that we've got mana doublers and then you've got to worry about Cabal Coffers and things like that. But our opponent might be worried about a Paradox Engine. So now we've got, okay, Grim Monolith. Let's definitely get this down. We'll play, yeah, we'll play the Grim Monolith, then play the Gilded Lotus, then play the Dark Steel Heart, or oh, it's the Cold Steel Heart, isn't it? Obviously named Black with that. And then it's him to Turak and keep our fingers crossed for something good from our opponent. Get rid of a Primordial Hydra and an Arbor Colossus. Well, two big things to get rid of there. And um, we'll hold back the beast as a blocker. So how much mana have we got here? That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got ten next turn. So we have to choose between all his dust and our commander. <laughs> okay, getting into a Terastodon, giving us a bunch more blockers here. So they're just giving us a bunch of time to deal with things. And we keep getting into lands. Let's go for that up Nixilis then. And we will kill off the Terastodon. And continue to hold back blockers. We don't mind taking our time in this deck at all. The longer our opponent takes to get rid of us, the more time we have to get our commander back into play. And there's every chance that we could get into a tutor for a Cabal Coffers. And they're running low on cards as well. 
They haven't flipped their Nyss around just yet. They're one land away from doing that. Okay, now it's a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Wow, they've uh, they've got quite the quite the hand here. They've only got one card left in hand though. And then flipping around the Nyssa, so that won't be swinging in. Might be time for... Hmm, well, we'll see what happens with this Crater Hoof. It might be time for all this dust. We will wrap up our Obnixilis in that, though. Okay, just swinging in with that, so let's get rid of all the elephants. And now they've only got one card in hand. If we can... This is really hard to keep out of play is the problem because she enables herself to flip. Well, there's an Urborg. We don't need Urborg. Uh, but we'll play it now just in case we want to... Uh, we'll see if we can get into something with Obnixilis first. We might draw into Cabal Coffers there. We do not. It's Grasp of Darkness. So let's go read the bones first. And there's an extra planar lens, I do like that. So let's put that on the bottom and that on top. And there's a chrome mox as well. That one is exile something from your hand. And we'll keep hold of that for now, I think. Yeah, let's play a swamp. Going for the extra planar lens. Get rid of a tap land. We've got all the basics in place, so all of these will tap for two next turn. Well, as soon as this turn. And then I think Grasp of Darkness onto that thing. And then swinging at Nyssa is alright. And now our opponent needs to try and keep us off of 12 mana next turn. They're in exactly the right colours to get rid of extra planar lens, but they just get into a forest off of Nyssa. They've still got two cards to play though. One of which was a land. They swing in at us, not the Obnixilis. But then pull back. Yeah, they are going in at Obnixilis, as they probably should. Alright, now a Grim Shooter. Uh, yeah, so it's Grim Shooter. Does that put it into our hand? Yes, it does. So let's have a look in our library and see what we can go for here. We don't have Exsanguinate. Yeah, I think going for something like Khan would be good. Yeah, let's go for Khan Liberated. I think our opponent might struggle dealing with that. In fact, we'll draw with Obnixilis first to see if we can make better use of the lands. All right, Oblivion Stone, that's more board wipes. Let's get down this Khan. Force our opponent to exile the card that's in their hand. And we got an Epic Confrontation, target creature you control, plus one, plus two, fight. Yeah, I don't mind seeing the back of that. Play out a Swamp. And we might as well get down the Oblivion Stone, I think. So let's get rid of Nyssa. And then we'll get down the old stone and pass the turn. And the limit break on this is minus 14. Uh, you put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Yeah, so we basically just wipe out all of our opponent's permanents there. Can't say I've ever used the limit break on this before. Our opponent goes straight in for their Nyssa, Fastwood Seer, which only costs 4 mana. And then they play the forest that they tutored for, flipping her over straight away. And this is exactly what happens with Nyssa. That's why she's such a powerful commander. And going for the 4-4. And then drawing cards with a Garrick Primal Hunter. That's a pretty good draw from our opponent. So they get into four cards there. Followed by another Mana Dork. And another Mana Dork in Sylvan Karyatid. Whatever they draw into, they're going to be able to play. And now Arbor Elf comes in at Obnixilis. So I think it's time. Yeah, it's about time that we saw our commander again. Let's draw with Obnixilis. We need to start gaining some life here. Uh, so we will... Yeah, we'll get down our commander first of all. And if they want to swing into that, they're more than welcome to. 
go for a swamp. We'll play the charcoal diamond. And then we can put a fake counter on something if we want to. Let's plus the Khan. And make our opponent get rid of a permanent from their hand. We've got the limit break on Khan next turn. If we want to, they get rid of a forest. Oh, I misread the limit break before. You actually don't get to keep all your permanents. You just keep the permanents that were exiled with this. So we'd actually only start with a forest. So that limit break isn't necessarily going to win us the game. Now Nissa plus in again. And that is an end raise forerunner that they've revealed. So that is a mini crater hoof behemoth. Which I don't think helps them. Because we've got a big lifelinker in the way. Worth knowing about though. Well they're using mana with the arbor elf. Another mana dork from our opponent. Followed by that end raise forerunners. This is vigilance trample and plus two plus two. To our opponent's stuff. So let's see what they go after here. I would like to put a fake counter on our Obnixilis. And then one on Grizzlebrand. And wipe the board but. It's all dependent on how they swing in here. Going in at Khan. Okay. So we'll go through to blocks. We will trade. The Lanoir Elves. And we will get rid of that thing. That will gain a 7 life. And this will deal 7 damage to Khan. Yeah, not really too worried there. Like I said, Khan isn't really worth us getting the limit break off with. So at the end of the turn, we'll put a fake counter on Obnixilis. Okay, and then it's a sign in blood. Let's plus Khan. Get rid of the card in our opponent's hand as soon as we can. And it is a Stone Hoof Chieftain. Yeah, we've gotten rid of some good stuff from our opponent's hand so far. In fact, that would be worth going for the limit break if we start the game with that in play. Now we go for a plus on Obnixilis. And that's a sinkhole. Don't necessarily care about that. We'll go signing blood on ourselves. Okay, that's a Crucible, a Noxious Gear Hulk. Uh, yeah, I don't think we necessarily need to go for Old Stone just yet. Let's go for that Noxious Gear Hulk for some more life gain. We gain life equal to the destroyed creature's toughness. So we'll definitely get rid of that thing. Then we'll get down the Urborg. Get down the Chrome Mox, getting rid of Sinkhole. I'll just hope that my opponent doesn't play a land that I want to kill off. And then it's one... Two, three, into Crucible. I don't think we can make use of Crucible yet. We haven't gotten into any fetches, but our opponent might blow up one of our lands. Then we swing in at our opponent with the Grizzlebrand. And then two more hits like that will take them out of the game. We go back up to 32. And if the End Raise Forerunner and the Crater Hoof don't do it, then it doesn't seem as though much is going to. But they might get into a big Genesis wave or something like that. But we do have two means of wiping the board. It's haste on something like a Concordant Crossroads that we're worried about mainly. Spider Silk Armor. Okay, that's creatures you control have plus one to their toughness and reach. That's a pretty good one. And that may well be the thing that encourages us to crack the O-Stone. So we'll go for a fake counter onto Obnixilis. Not Obnixilis, onto uh, Grizzlebrand. And there's a fetch, so that goes well with Crucible of Worlds. Uh, I think we're in a position now to go for Oblivion Stone. Or oh, we could just exile this, actually, couldn't we? Yeah, let's just exile that with Khan. I want to keep as many things in play as possible. And this is actually an instant speed board wipe, which we may be able to make use of. If our opponent gets into something really good. I swear I'm not trying to drag the game out. I just don't want to wipe the board if we don't need to. Let's draw with Obnixilis. 
And we're actually at enough life now where we can draw with Grizzlebrand as well if we want to. Alright, that's another swamp. Let's play that. And then it's the second to last hit on our opponent. They've got two card draws to make, one from Nyssa and one from their draw step, so they better hope for something good. They reveal, who Court of Calling might do something for them. Court of Calling, search your library for a creature card with CMC X or less and put it onto the battlefield. They've got lots and lots of mana, so they could grab any creature they like with that. But we do have that Oblivion Stone held up. And it won't kill off our own Grizzlebrand thanks to the fake counter. Court of Calling, where X is 10. And what is that? Archetype of Endurance. Creatures you control have Hexproof. Yeah, I'm not really worried about that. We just swing in for the victory next turn then, unless our opponent's got something else. It is an Incubation Druid. They're just showing us that they don't have anything. Yeah, their two Hail Marys have already come and gone. I mean, they had Terastodon. And then the Crater Hoof and the Baby Crater Hoof. So we won't disrespect our opponent's time, we'll just go straight in for the victory. And that is 21 points of commander damage to our opponent. Very well played by our opponent, and they had us on the ropes for quite a bit there. We had to do some reactionary defensive work there, but managed to claw it back in. I think the turning tide was the extra planar lens that our opponent couldn't manage to get rid of. Uh, that alongside a bunch of basics is just a whole heap of mana that allowed us to do anything we like. And our opponent said very graciously that he was outmatched. I don't think he was outmatched. I think it was just uh, it was just unlucky on his part and lucky on mine. Uh, yeah, pit these two decks off against each other, and I think I think the Nissa deck would win just as often as the Grizzlebrand deck would, based on the type of things that our opponent can do. Yeah, I think it was just me being lucky today. But it was well played by both of us, I think, so hopefully you all enjoyed watching that one. That was a more interactive game than I usually get with Grizzlebrand. So, like I said, hopefully you all had some fun with that. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.